All right, well, let's get started. Thank you everyone for joining us today. This is Mountain States Regional Genetics Network's Genetics Pop-Up, Hope Through Support. Thank you all for joining us um, for our last genetics pop-up. Um, just a couple of Zoom logistics before we get started. We are um, asking everyone to stay on mute during the first part um, of our presentation, and then we will have some Q&A during the second part. Feel free to keep your camera on or off, whatever you feel comfortable with. We are recording. Unfortunately, we're not streaming to uh, Facebook today. Um, that, that did not work. So we will post the recording of this on YouTube. Um, at number three here, you can see our active participant list. And if you have any questions, um, please use the chat to message Michaela or myself um, from Mountain States. We're here, we can help help with any of those. We do have, um, we do ask when we get to the Q&A portion, if you could um, use your the raise hand function, which is under the reactions tab here on your Zoom, that will help um, if we have lots of questions. And then next, we do have Spanish interpretation today. Thank you to our two interpreters or who are here. So if that is new to you and you would like to access that, you can look for this interpretation um, button on the bottom of your Zoom panel. And um, you have a couple options here. You can choose English um, or off, where you will hear only the presenter in English. You can choose Spanish, where you'll hear the, hear the presenter in English and the interpreter it's in Spanish at the same time. Or you can choose Spanish and mute original audio, which will allow you to only hear the interpreter in Spanish. So those are the options. And if you're having any trouble finding that, again, it's on the bar where, where the mute and start video are all the way to the right-hand side. All right. We'd like to start off with our funding statement. Our um, funding comes from HRSA, Health Resources and Service Administration. And um, if you are interested in learning more about this funding, you can visit hrsa.gov. We are greatly appreciative for this funding um, to make events like this uh, possible in the Mountain States region. So a little bit about what we're gonna do today on our pop-up. Um, we're gonna have a little introduction. We're going to switch over and We're going to do a fun uh, Mentimeter uh, poll about what is hope. And then we're also going to have a genetic navigator panel. Um, our number of our genetic navigators have joined us today. So we're gonna have some questions for them. Um, we have some links to some genetic support resources. And then the best part of the pop-ups are your questions. So as you're listening and um, participating, please feel free to note your questions in the chat um, or jot them down on a piece of paper so you don't forget and we'll, we'll have plenty of time for those at the end. So as I mentioned, this is our last genetics pop-up um, and it is bittersweet for me for sure um, because this is our sixth year of doing these genetics pop-ups. These genetics pop-ups literally started as an idea to get, a, get some folks together in communities and meet for coffee and donuts and talk about genetics. And these are some pictures from some of our uh, first uh, two years of pop-ups before COVID hit. Um, COVID changed that um, because we weren't able to gather in coffee shops anymore um, during a period of that time. And so we took these pop-ups virtual and um, that's how they've stayed because we're able to reach so many more people in our states, um, uh, throughout our states, but we sure do miss the days of, of getting together for coffee with our, our little stuffed, stuffed gene and our gene in a box. Back in the old days, we literally mailed people genes in a box and resources and materials. And um, we have these available virtually um, at the link. And I'll ask Michaela if she could pop that in the, in the chat when she gets a second. Um, but that we have a lot of these resources that we used to mail people available on our website as PDFs if you're interested. All right, so a little bit about myself. My name is Christy Weiss. I am the Mountain States Regional Genetics Network Project, or sorry, Project Manager. And I'm going to play a little video 
about who MSRGN is if you're new to new to this pop-up or new to knowing about MSRGN. And this video will also answer the question of who the genetic navigators are. Um, we have some of them, you can see their purple backgrounds here and they'll be on the panel later, but this will explain a little bit about what the genetic navigator program is. So I'm gonna go next to the video. Hello, and thank you for a few short minutes of your time. Let me tell you a little bit about the Mountain States Regional Genetics Network. Who is Mountain States Regional Genetics Network, or MSRGN for short, you might ask? MSRGN is a regional network consisting of eight states, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and we are funded federally by HRSA that funds the seven regional genetics networks, which includes MSRGN, along with the Family Center and the National Coordinating Center. The mission of the regional genetics networks is to increase access to genetic services for individuals and their families, including those who are underserved in our region. In 2021, Mountain States Regional Genetics Network selected eight individuals who had navigated the genetic journey for their own loved ones in their own state. These individuals became our genetic navigators and are now available to help families navigate genetics. Genetic navigators offer resources, guidance, and navigation to others from a perspective of someone who has been there and done that and has been on a genetics path and journey for their own loved ones. Sometimes we all just need a helping hand. The ultimate goal of the program is navigating to hope for families who may be filled with questions, who may be looking for resources, or who may be experiencing barriers to accessing <laughs> genetic services in their state. Thank you for uh, watching that video and um, learning a little bit more about the Mountain States region and our genetic navigators. We're now gonna switch over. I'm gonna switch my screen over to Mentimeter. Um, first, I'm gonna put up this uh, slide um, with some instructions. So Mentimeter is an interactive polling um, platform and this is where you get to play along. So you can either scan the QR code that is on your screen with a separate device, whether that's like a phone or a tablet, or if you're on a desktop or laptop, you can just open up another browser window, another, another web browser, and type in menti.com, www.menti.com, and then it will ask you for a code. And that code for today is 62 seven five three nine one so while everyone's doing that i'm just gonna give you a minute here um, these instructions will come up again as soon as i bring up the other presentations so i'm going to stop sharing for a second and again if you haven't gotten that the menti.com is six two seven five three nine one and michaela's gonna help us put it in the chat as well so let me switch over slides and then again, these instructions will come back up in just a moment once I get the other slide deck up. I, I hope that you like this. This is a this is a fun one one to do, and um, hopefully you can play along with us. All right, so here we are with Mentimeter. Um, is everybody seeing the Mentimeter? Hopefully, I see some hearts coming out. So. Hopefully that's working. All right. Again, here are those um, instructions. So if you were ha having trouble connecting, um, you, you can try again. So it's either scanning the QR code that should bring it right up in your phone or tablet in a separate device, or you can open a browser window with menti.com and type in the code 62753913. Is anyone having any problems? If they are, feel free to message us in the chat. If not, I'm gonna to go to the next page here and um, we, can, we can do some practice ones. 
All right, we are uh, joining today close to Rare Disease Day, um, and we'll have some some information about Rare Disease Day here in a moment. But I thought we could do a warm up question um, about what rare disease um, are you connected to, and that might be for yourself, a loved one, a family member, a friend, maybe yourself. Um, so if there's a if there's a condition, a genetic condition or rare disease condition that you are connected to or or know somebody with, um, please feel free to put it in the boxes with the word and it will create this word cloud that we see forming on the screen here. The zebra is the symbol of rare disease day um, for for the reason that um, a very popular quote of um, when you think, when you hear hoof beats, think horses. Um, and um, in the rare disease community, um, uh, many advocates say and, and encourage um, the medical community to think about zebras um, because rare diseases um, aren't as common, um, but they're collect collectively common while individually rare. Uh, lots of lots of different conditions. It looks like maybe the most most uh, votes here for cystic fibrosis and that's staying in the middle and and the largest one. Some Eller Stanlos, and oh, they keep keep moving around. Lots of maybe specific genetic ones or chromosomal ones with these with these letters and numbers. All right, looks like they they keep coming in. So thank you for thank you for sharing. And we're we're really glad everyone is everyone is here today. So thank you for thank you for sharing that. Thirty they still keep coming in. Thirty five responses. Wonderful. Okay, we're going to move on to the next slide here. Again, just a couple warm up slides um, to get you used to using Mentimeter. Um, we would love to know: Have you ever come to a genetics pop up before? Is this your first time? If it is, you can um, click the red on the stoplight. If you're not sure and can't remember, you can click the yellow. If this is, uh, you've been here before and you're back again, we'd love you to click the green. Great, lots of you coming back, uh, have been here before. So welcome back. And it looks like we have some new folks as well. So thank you for, thank you for joining us today for your first pop-up. All right. I think they're slowing down now. Thank you guys so much. 19 yeses and oh, 20 yeses and uh, I'm back again and eight nopes. It's my first time. All right. This one is a fun one because you get to tell us where you're from. Um, the map here is the Mountain States region, and, but we know that folks join us from all over the country. So if you're not in the, our Mountain States region and you're outside, you can just put it in about the approximate location um, on the outskirts of the map of where you might live, either east or west. Oh, I see an east, eastern dot there popping up. Um, so we welcome everybody to these pop-ups and we thank you for coming. Even if you're outside our region, we're just glad you're here and lots from our region today. It's like Texas has quite a big res re representation, New Mexico popping up there. One from Mo Montana, no one from Wyoming yet. Maybe, uh, our, our genetic navigator will join here shortly from Wyoming. Lots, lots from the East coast or mid Midwest, maybe. Thank you all for coming. All right, we'll let a couple more dots here pop up. All right, I'm going to move on to the next slide. This question is um, one about hope. The theme for our genetics pop-ups this year has been hope. And so we want to know from you, though, how do you define hope? Or in other words, what does the word hope mean to you and your family? And this is one where you can just type in your free free responses, your free flowing responses. Um, it'll form another word cloud here. I see some words popping up here: possibility, faith, answers, opportunities. This too shall pass. Clarity and care. And again, there's no right or wrong answers to this one. It's just just individual and personal, what, what hope means to you and your family. 
everything will work out. Brighter future. Answers. See popping up there in the middle. Thank you for, for contributing and sharing. I don't know if I've read all of them because they keep moving around, but I just saw, I just saw a, another one pop up there. Attention and progress, acceptance. Great, thank you so much for, for contributing to that. I have another question here for you. And this is in regards to specifically the topic of genetic testing or a genetic diagnosis or a genetic condition. What does that, what does the word hope mean for you in that context? So does your, does your, does the word hope change in the context of genetics? Um, if you are impacted by that personally, or like I said earlier, if you know somebody or have a loved one that's impacted by a genetic condition, what does the word hope mean in that context um, when we're talking about genetics, testing, diagnosis, or conditions? I see answers quite big, answers and knowledge and cure quite big in the middle there. Options, reassurance, no more seizures, hope for a cure, understanding, being connected. I saw roadmap and opportunity. Thank you for all these responses. I see answers staying staying in the center and the biggest, so that might have more than more than one person person putting that in, um, since it's staying there quite quite large. Being connected, that's a great jumping off point since we're going to be talking about support today. All right, I'm going to go to the next slide. And this is a little grid, um, and since we're talking about support today. We'd love to know um, what that's looked like for, for you and your family. So there's there's four, four different types of support that we've identified, um, social or psychosocial support, financial support, child or sibling support, and then caregiver or respite support. And there's two axes, and on the x-axis, on the, on the horizontal one there, how difficult is this type of support to find or obtain? And then on the um, other axis there, how much hope does this give you? So you should see on your screen where you can um, kind of do a slider there and 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 rate some of the rate those four different types of support. And as we as the responses come in, you'll see these dots move all around um, this little uh, graph here as to how difficult those types of support are to maintain, but then also how much hope does that type of support bring to you and your family? So I see so social and psychosocial support quite high on the hope hope meter um, there, the hope hope axis, um, and kind of in the middle there for the how how difficult is this to find or obtain. And then lower down, it looks like child and sibling support and caregiver and respite support. We're a little lower, um, but about the same difficulty to attain. Oh, they're, they're separating out a little bit there. And then child sibling support seems like might might be high harder to obtain, um, but then also cl close close by there with the other child and caregiver and financial report. Oh, sorry, financial support. And it's kind of neat. Let me see if it'll let me do this. If I click on these. We can see all the different answers that have gone into that average of where that dot is. So you can see it's kind of all over the map. Um, and then they're floating around where it averages out. So these these mean lots of different things to lots of different people, um, depending on uh, depending on where you are in your journey. But you can see those 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 balls are scattered all across all across these graphs. So thank you for sharing. It looks like uh, that that number one, the social and psychosocial support, did did continue to climb there on the hope 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 uh, axis. All right, we're going to go on to the next one here, and this is um, what type of support in regards to genetics are you seeking today? Um, this is an open ended question, and you can um, just kind of freely chat. So if there's a specific type of support that you're looking for, um, please type it in um, the boxes. 
um, if it's maybe support specifically for a specific condition or um, maybe financial support to get genetic testing paid for, any type of support. Um, just tell us what kind of support that is that you might be looking for today. And these are gonna come up kind of like sticky notes um, on the page here as people type, type those in. So I see government support, support of research, resources, knowledge and mentorship, support resources for my patients, how I can support a family who are just starting their genetic journey, another financial support one here, educational resources, knowledge, treatment, shared lived experiences, supporting families, someone with Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, someone with 6Q2R syndrome treatment, knowledge of new developments in genetic testing and data that might help people who are still undiagnosed with current testing available, Wow, all sorts of all sorts of different uh, supports. Re references of places where they are working on Jacob syndrome. I want to participate in the studies that are being carried out. Another one for educational supports. Template care map, medical school and community. Empathy and financial support. Great. Thank you for sharing all these different different things that brought you here today and what what you're seeking. New development research. Great. We will try to get to some of those and provide some resources, um, but I also want to let you know that we do have our genetic navigators that we can connect you with um, after today's uh, pop-up ends. So if you're if you did not find the exact answer to what you're looking for, um, we can we can have these conversations offline. So that brings me to our last question here. And are there any genetic questions you have um, today? We started these genetic pop-ups as a place to have a safe conversation, a place for families to ask questions about genetics. No question is off limits. We do not claim to have the answers to all the questions about genetics or even maybe just a, a, a few of them, but we are here to, to really help find resources and try to help families answer questions that they have about genetics. So. If there's any questions off the top of your head today that you came here with today, please share them um, in the open-ended question box. And again, we'll try to get to them, but um, we'll also have a time at the end where you can unmute your line or type it in the chat box um, if that did not get answered through our panel discussion. Any questions about genetics that anyone has? Oh, I see one popping up. More in-depth testing for Beck beckwith Men syndrome, okay. Anyone else? Okay, we might need to do a little digging on that one, but um, I'm gonna go on here to the next slide, which brings us to the end of our presentation. So I'm gonna stop sharing that and we're gonna go back to um, our, our other slides and, and get ready for our um, panel presentation. So let's see, I'm gonna share here. Present. Okay. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce to you all um, some of our genetic navigators. And um, hopefully you can see my slides now for our panel discussion. Um, these are all of our genetic navigators. Um, Arizona, we have known. Colorado, we have Jamie. Montana, Jennifer. Mariah in Nevada, Desiree in New Mexico, Lourdes in Texas, Tiffany in Utah, and Kayla in Wyoming. And some of them have been able to join us here today. They have the purple backgrounds on. So I see Jen, Lourdes, Desiree, Known. Am I missing any? Those are the ones that I have to scroll quite a few screens here. Did I get everybody? Hopefully that's all. All right. So I have a couple questions for our panel today. And so I'm gonna go ahead to that slide here. Um, and we have three questions and I'll just ask our genetic navigators to just um, unmute um, if they'd like to answer these questions. But we'll start off with, um, these are all questions about support since that's our theme today. What type of support brought you and your family hope on your own genetics journey? Would someone like to start off by answering that? I'll start, Christy. Yeah. Oh, there's Mariah. Sorry, I didn't see you, Mariah. 
That's because I don't have to have a purple background. Um, okay, no worries. <laughs> so when when my kids were first diagnosed, um, I was lucky enough to have been connected with another family who was going through a similar journey, and they were a little bit farther ahead in that same journey, and that that brought me a lot of hope because um, it kind of helped answer a bunch of questions that we had. Um, you know, the doctor kind of provided more of the um, textbook type of things, but the other family had more of the day-to-day, this is what it looks like type of answers. And so it was very helpful. Great. Thanks for sharing that. You cannot um, underestimate the the support from another parent, I think. Um, and that's, that's the the foundation of our genetic navigator program and why you guys are doing what you're, what you're doing is because you are, you are those parents that have, have lived and breathed, breathed this and can help other families. So thanks for sharing that, Mariah. Does anybody else want to talk about their own type of support that they, they found hope with for their own family? And I see Tiffany joined us too. Sorry, Tiffany, I didn't, didn't see you either. I apologize. Yeah, go ahead, Noan. Yeah, so so to sort of echo what um, Mariah said, uh, the support for our family was um, very much support from other parents. That was really helpful. And we were also lucky, and I know this doesn't apply to everyone, but um, my daughter's condition had a very strong disease-specific organization, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. So that's always, if that's out there for you, that, that would be my, you know, number one place to start that I would suggest for a family and having worked in early intervention and families with a lot of different, you know, um, conditions and diagnosis in their children. um, I just think always working, whether it's through the genetic clinic or anywhere to connect with those other parents who are on a similar journey, that's, that's for sure. Like I'm sure most people will say that's been the most supportive. Thanks known for that perspective with all the many hats that you've worn. I appreciate it. Would anybody else like to chime in before we go to our question number two? Oh, this is Lourdes from Texas. Yeah, go ahead, Lourdes. Uh, Just adding uh, something else about um, the, the importance of the finding another families. And in another one that is facing the same challenges as you is also to hear uh, success stories of children with uh, either with the same condition as your child or with another rare conditions um, because that provide provide us with a sense of hope. So hearing another another stories from from other families and always be on the side with uh with a support group or family members that of a child with any other condition because they understand what what you are uh having day day to day. Yeah thanks for thanks for sharing that um Lord it's so important I think to to hear other other families stories um even like you said, success stories, but even about struggles. I think families' stories about struggles can also be um, a sense of hope. I know for my own journey, like that was uh, encouraging to me that I wasn't the only one going through it, right? Even the struggle part. So thanks for sharing that, Lourdes. All right, I'm going to move on to question number two. So we have some time at the end for um, our attendees' uh, questions, but where should a parent who is looking for support start? I think Noan kind of already touched a little bit on that with her um, recommendation to start with a disease-specific support group, so a diagnosis-specific support group, which is great um, if you have a diagnosis, Um, but sometimes um, families are in a situation that that they don't have a diagnosis. So yeah, Jen, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Um, This is Jen from Montana, and I was thinking um, during the first question also about Um, when you don't have a specific diagnosis, there are organizations for people who don't have a diagnosis and there's also, or who are waiting. And there's also groups for people who have a really rare diagnosis. And we know there's a lot of people that have somebody with a rare diagnosis. So when they try to reach out and find a group, it's harder to find a group with that specific diagnosis. For example, my daughter has something that affects her 18th chromosome. Yeah, we get uh, two chocolates. 
And there's a larger group um, of 18th chromosome of people who have been impacted on their 18th chromosome that I was able to join. And then the group narrows down to my child's diagnosis. So sometimes there's a, a bigger group like undiagnosed or rare diagnosis that you can be part of that isn't your same diagnosis, but you can still have shared experiences. And so I think sometimes, you know, if you're looking for your own diagnosis and you're not able to find it, sometimes there'll be something else that's close to it or in that same group of diagnosis where you can still share a lot of information with each other. Thank you, Jen. That's, that's very helpful. Um, especially I think on the chromosomal conditions like you're describing too, because there can be sometimes overarching um, for, for those as well. So um, thanks for sharing that. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lourdes, for letting me know Kayla's here as well. So Kayla, sorry for missing you as well. I've got, got too many boxes on my screen, but um, if you'd like to, anybody else would like to chime in um, on where a parent should start who might be looking for support or I, I, I worded this question with the word parent, but I know in our Mentimeter, I heard that they, we have some physicians joining us. So we have some um, therapists joining us. So, so maybe even if there's support individuals here um, that are in a, in a role where they're working with families, maybe where they could start too, to help, help even get that information to families, if anyone has any advice on that. Anybody else want to answer? This is Jen. I hate to duplicate, but there is one thing that I think providers can do that I have found providers are sometimes reluctant to do, which is to connect families to each other. And when I say they've been reluctant in the past, it's been about privacy, not because they don't want families to find each other, but a lot of times families are desperate to find each other. And if you're the person that's diagnosing families, or if you are an OT or a PT, um, connecting families to each other is a great way to start parents and families off. And this is Lourdes, just to, to a little bit about the, the professional side. So establishing also a strong communication channel with healthcare, with the healthcare providers can provide valuable insights also in guidance and access to the latest research and treatment. So so I strongly encourage parents to to have an open communication with the with the professional, the healthcare professionals. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that, Lourdes and Jen. All right, I'm going to move on to question number three. Um, and this is a chance for our genetic navigators to highlight some specific organizations, support groups that has helped you um, or another parent maybe that you've helped um, navigate on their journey. And um, some of these I know might be disease specific and that's okay because there might be somebody here who's either working with the family or who is impacted by that condition themselves. So if anybody would like to give some accolades to specific support organizations that, that helped you on your journey, um, I'll, let, I'll turn it over to our genetic navigators to highlight, highlight some of those. I'll go first. Yeah, go ahead, Kayla. I'm here. I missed the purple background memo too, so. Sorry, it's okay. <laughs> I was like, you guys are so pretty. I'll keep my camera off. Um, so um, some support organizations that have been really helpful to us, um, the National Organization of Rare Disorders. They have a patient assistance program there that helps us pay for co-pays and um, insurance premiums and even my son's uh, medically necessary foods and formulas. So they have a lot of patient assistance programs there and many other things, not things we've utilized, but um, that program specifically. Um, and then one within my state. So I am Kayla, I'm the genetics navigator for Wyoming. Um, within my state, as we know, in all of the mountain states, um, we're rural and there's distance between us. And in the state of Wyoming, most children have to leave the state for any sort of care whatsoever. Um, other than their basic everyday care. So there is an organization here called the Ors Hope Foundation that helps families displaced out of state for medical care for their children. Um, they don't cover medical expenses, but they help cover travel, lodging. Um, they have a great relationship with the Ronald McDonald House and um, local hotels so they can get really good rates. Um, so that organization is so invaluable to the state. We've not used it ourselves, but every family I come in contact with, I'm like, have you talked to the Ors Hope Foundation? So. That's just a really cool organization within our state. 
Thanks for sharing that, Kayla. And and really a great example of, of the psychosocial support plus the financial support, right? Filling both of those with, with that um with that organization. And and I know that's specific to Wyoming, but encourage other people to look in their own state for similar type um, nonprofits or foundations that might be doing something similar. And I see Mariah's hand up. So go ahead, Mariah. Um, I was just going to say one that helped us a lot was the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation. They provided, like when I contacted them, they were able to mail out a an entire packet. It's like a book of all the different ways that you can get help. Um, and then it also provided a bunch of resources for different medical professionals. And so like, just for example, my daughter had to have physical therapy and there was a whole section on physical therapy and tips that you could bring to the physical therapist. So it was incredibly helpful. That sounds great. And great tip also for actually contacting, right? We can all go to their website and maybe join their newsletter, but actually reaching out if they have a patient um, or a family hotline or, or way to contact them because they might have other resources like your uh, example of that they could actually mail to you that might be right. um, invaluable, that even more valuable than a website, right? Because you can actually right. take it with you. So yes. thanks for sharing that. And I see Desiree's hand up. Go ahead, Desiree. Hi everybody. Um, I'm Desiree Maddox. I'm. It touches on question a little bit on question one. Also, um, it's kind of um, agreeing with what Noan was saying about uh, early intervention services. Here in New Mexico, we have um, it's called New Vistas, and they have a really great program that for our family personally, they really followed through with us um, with each of my girls three years each girl and their their support was just completely invaluable to our family. Um, also, we have another program, uh, Children's Medical Services. They have helped us so much on our journey as well. Very, very helpful. Like um, places to get, um, to help you find um, lodging and um, the Ronald McDonald House has really helped my family for a few things where, you know, we've had um, late night MRIs or anything like that. And they've been really helpful for, for um, helping us find a room and, and they're really great. There's, you know, there's food there. There's everything that you could possibly need there. They're extremely helpful. And also our insurance. Um, our reimbursement and everything as well. And that's Presbyterian. Thank you for sharing, Desiree. All those are great, great examples. And, and people can look for similar, similar things in their own state if they're not in New Mexico. So thank you. All right, well, I'm going to go move on to let everyone know um, that's joined us today. If you would like to continue the conversation, if you live in one of the states in our region and would like to continue the conversation with one of our genetic navigators um, about some of what they shared today or, or other questions, if they don't all get answered during, during our pop-up today, this is how you can reach out to them. And so um, the format of the email addresses is just the state name, so I'll use knowns as an example. So Arizona, and then the word genetic, not with an S. So just G-E-N-E-T-I-C at gmail.com. So each state name, Colorado genetic, Montana genetic, Nevada genetic, New Mexico genetic, and so on at gmail.com. That will go right to our genetic navigators. And um, they check these accounts once a week and can, can um, respond back to you via email or set up a time when you can talk on Zoom or over a conference call. And I have my email at the bottom here. So if you don't live in one of our states, but would like to get connected with someone um, in your own state, um, we have regional genetics networks all across the country. And so I'm happy to connect you with um, folks in your region as well. So, um, or if uh, you just want to have any questions about Mountain States, feel free to reach out to me at kweese at mountainstatesgenetics.org. All right, this comes to the part where I have a couple of slides and Michaela's gonna help me out by putting some of these links in the chat of just some general um, resources for support. Um, so you've heard from some of, you've heard some of these today, but I um, just wanna highlight some of these as well. There is a website called Disease Info Search um, where if you have a, um, 
a diagnosis, you can put that in the search bar and find not only information about that condition, but also links to support groups for that um, information. You can see up here, find support or list an organization. So if there's folks on the call who are representing organizations that offer support, feel free that you can add your name to this um, database as well. Um, but this is a great place uh, to start if you've recently got a diagnosis and would like to look for support, specific support organizations for that diagnosis. Similarly, there is an organization out of NIH, um, National Institutes of Health, called GARD. It stands for Genetic and Rare Disease Information Center, and they also have a database. You can see here it is Browse Disease A to Z and Find Advocacy Organizations. They also have a 1888 number where you can talk with a genetic information specialist. So if you have a, a diagnosis and you would like to get more information, you can call this number. Um, they also can help you find um, things like specialists for that condition, uh, research and clinical trials. So I think we had a question about the bet with Wiederman syndrome. That might be a, this might be a place to call and ask specifically about a specific condition. Um, this just a note though this this hotline will not give you diagnostic information. So this you can't call here to figure out if you if your child or loved one has a certain condition. It's more for information once about a condition that you already know about or 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 being suspected of, they can give you information on a, a diagnosis. And then this is the NORD database. NORD was um, rec uh, was mentioned earlier, um, National Organization for Rare Disease and Disorders. Um, they are actually the US sponsor of Rare Disease Day. And so they have a rare disease database where you can look up conditions, uh, specific disease specific database. And these are curated responses. They have medical uh, residents and MDs write these <clears throat> write this information about these conditions. Um, and so this is also a great way, and they also have a patient and organization tab as well. And then this um, is from one of our other regional genetics networks, the Midwest uh, Genetics Network. And they have just redone this. Um, this has existed for a while, but they've just made it into its own website. Um, so this link is new. And this is called Journey Through Diagnosis Guide. And I would recommend this for anyone who's recently or newly been received a diagnosis or a loved one has received a diagnosis because it has a lot of information on emotion relationships, support information, medical care, insurance, looking ahead and tools and resources. And it can be a really great guide and it's not disease specific. So it can be for really any, any diagnosis of a genetic condition. So I highly recommend this one as well. And thank you, Michaela, for putting all these in the in the chat so people can easily access them. And then we just wanted to highlight Family Voices um, is a national organization where um, families can get connected in their state. This is the link to their affiliates. So you can find if they have a organization or chapter in your state um, and then the contact information for them. Um, but this is a great place to go if you are looking for general information about navigating the health system, healthcare system in your, in your state. And then also I wanted to highlight Parent to Parent. And Parent to Parent USA is a, um, a organization that matches parents with one another who may have um, a child with a similar diagnosis or the same diagnosis. And again, they also have um, a network across the United States of different state-based um, organizations. And so if you go to this website here, p2pusa.org forward slash parents, you can find um, if there's a local one in your state um, to contact. And there's our zebra again, um, but we, would, we just wanted to give a little shout out to Rare Disease Day since we're holding these uh, this pop last pop-up around Rare Disease Day. Um, so what is a rare disease? It's really any disease that affects um, fewer than 200,000 people in the United States. And um, the qualifying number for that varies depending on where in the world you are, but that's the number in the United States. And as I mentioned, the zebra is used because they say when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not or think zebras, not horses. And then this this next slide, um, this is from one of our pop-ups last year, um, but many people ask us how many rare diseases are there? And so this is a link to a report and um, 
I'll ask Michaela if she can pop that in the chat if anybody's interested in reading it. But this is a recent report from Rare X, and their number was 10,867 rare diseases. And um, you can see right here, roughly 87% of those that are counted have a known or suspected genetic diagnosis or sorry, genetic basis. So um, rare disease encompasses a lot of different diagnoses and um, the majority of those being genetics. And that's why we have our genetics pop-ups around rare disease day, um, because it would be impossible for us to have 10,867 <laughs> genetics pop-ups for every, every single condition. There are a couple events coming up next week. If you're interested in an, another way to get support is connecting with the rare disease community. Um, and those are at NIH. They're having a, a virtual event um, and also um, the FDA. So February 29th is actually rare disease day because it's the rarest day of the year. And this year it's actually even more rare because we have, have leap year. And then FDA is holding theirs on March 1st. Um, so if you're interested in either one of those events, again, another way to connect with others in the rare disease community um, and also um, and also disease specific um, organizations. All right, we've got about 10 minutes left, which is a perfect amount of time for some questions. And so we'd like to just encourage you to um, use that raise hand function. I'm gonna stop sharing so I'll be able to see everybody's boxes, but if you can use that reactions button and then the raise hand function, that'll let us know that you have a question and you can either unmute your line um, and, and speak, or if you prefer, you could just type your question in the chat. I know we had some um, earlier from the Mentimeter that some people had questions about, so we can talk about those as well. Um, but I saw a couple, I'm just scrolling up in the chat, a couple earlier that um, I thought I could um, answer while everybody's thinking of theirs. So I'm going to stop sharing so I can see my chat and I can see all of, all of you. So I, I have one here that says, could there be more genes that are responsible for autism that have not yet been talked about? And that is a great question. Um, there, are, there are lots of genes that have been connected with, um, with autism. I would point you to, um, we, did a, we had a, um, a webinar on autism and genetics um, about a year ago. And so under our webinars tab on our website, you can find that and I'll see if I can get to it real quickly here and pop it in the chat. Um, but that is a place where you might start your research. If I'm not sure, sure um, if you've already looked into that or not, but that um, might be a place to, to start looking at, at the genetics of, of autism. And so I will put that in the chat here for you. Um, this is our webinar. It was it's for clinician uh, practitioners. Um, it's for primary care providers, but I think it provides a very good overview of um, autism and genetics. And I see Marin's um, hand is up. Marin, would you like to unmute your line? Yes. Hi. Thank you. Um, I'm in the Chicagoland area, and uh, we have a uh, rare disease child undiagnosed, okay. and are trying to right now. Um, get approval for genetic testing for myself because they believe that a lot of it is from the mother's line um, to be able to hopefully get to a diagnosis. Um, and she is in the CFC syndrome uh, world, which is very rare. I guess only two to 300 people apparently um, have this diagnosis. And um, how do we get assistance? Because uh, we had to challenge uh, the denial from the insurance to be able to get my genetic workup done uh, to potentially get to that diagnosis. Uh, it was then finally approved by the Illinois Board of Medicine. But at that point, the order had run out. And so we had to resubmit. And now we're back in the same boat literally a year later, um, wow. after the original thought of getting um, my genetics checked uh, on a deeper level. Yeah. So how can thank I get support? You. Yeah, thank you for thank you for asking that question. Um, you ask a very similar question that is our top question that's asked of our genetic navigators, and it is around um, genetic testing approvals and and payment and insurance and and those types of things. So 
I'm going to recommend my top uh, reference for for support and and information, um, and then I'll ask if our our genetic navigators want to chime in on anything else. But um, we have recently found a resource and helped um, uh, update this resource. It's in the process of being updated. Called Plugs. Um, and it's um, out of Seattle Children's um, Hospital, this organization, and they have a guide for um, navigating insurance um, for specifically for genetic testing. And I think it's a very thorough, thorough place with lots of checklists and things um, that can be done to expedite those processes. So um, I'm going to look for that link um, while I open it up the floor to ask if any other the genetic navigators would like to chime in and talk about um, maybe some ideas that might might help you. Thank you, Noan, you beat me to it. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm just gonna pull up the, the toolkit tool here. Does anybody else have any any thoughts or ideas? And, and I just would maybe ask Marin just a clarifying question. Are you looking for financial support um, or are you looking for more social support to figure out on uh, navigating like, navigating it is is one of those more important than the other at this moment I think for me it's just uh, getting the insurance to realize that we have a child with rare disease and that there this isn't the only thing that most probably <laughs> will be coming our way in regards to coverage because yeah. we pay a premium for our insurance I don't want to have to pay out of pocket. Um, and become dependent at some point. But, uh, you know, I have a very privileged situation that I do have a, a good sturdy salary. However, it is limited uh, because of the costs, obviously, that come along with uh, caretaking, that it gets challenged and therefore it's vulnerable. And, you know, we need to make sure we can keep our home and do all these other things while testing and, and, and so on is going on. So for me, it's more from an insurance support yeah. Uh, side of things, to be honest, because, you know, I've I've even realized this during pregnancy that everybody generalizes um, pregnancy and doesn't consider, you know, if there's um, yes. so issues I think, arising, right? Yeah. So, so I think one of the other things that comes to mind is that um, your insurance company, if you have not gotten a care coordinator or a nurse um, care manager um, for rare disease or for children with special health care needs, that would be my recommendation to ask for. Um, specifically, most insurance companies have a division for, um, I'm going to call it high needs or high utilization, and I, I dislike that word, but that is the word that's used in the insurance realm, so you might need to use that. It's for It's for those that are insured that might be um, having higher higher um, charges um, or or reimbursements, and so so oftentimes they will assign a person to help manage man, to help help the family communicate with to manage um, that because sometimes it takes a lot more levels of approvals and things. So I know our family did that when we were going through genetic testing, and it was incredibly helpful because I didn't have to explain the story every single time to a different person. I had a person that I was my point person and I could communicate with and they, she, she happened to be a nurse um, case manager. So I would highly recommend that um, as, as a step if you haven't already explored that. No, I appreciate that. I think our bigger issue with the care coordinator is we're literally right now in no man's land because nobody knows how to take charge of my daughter's situation. Yeah, and I understand. I, we're in dire straits and we have nowhere to turn, which is the sad part. So, Well, thank you for being here today. And if we can be of other assistance, I will we'll be happy to talk with you offline as well or connect you with folks in the Chicago area as well. So I'm just going to move on and just um, just because we're getting to the end here of our time and just want to give other people um, some ch a chance to ask some questions if anybody else would like to unmute their line. Um, we also have a gift card drawing that we would like to let uh, those of you who have stuck it out till the end participate in. So I'll just ask um, Mariah if she could, or sorry, not Mariah, <laughs> Michaela, if she could put those in the in the chat while we're just waiting for a couple other um, questions here. And we also have an evaluation link. If you could give us some feedback, we'd greatly appreciate the feedback on um, our genetics pop-up today. Were there any other questions anyone had about support or really just any genetic questions at all 
There's one that comes to mind from the Mentimeter, um, and that is uh, someone, there were quite a few asking for um, research support or possibly support for finding um, uh, trials that you could participate in. So I just wanted to give a shout out to clinicaltrials.gov as a go-to place for um, a database where you can actually search uh, diagnoses and different clinical trials that are going on. It gives you all the information on who is the primary investigator for that, um, who you can reach out to, who is eligible, what the exclusion criteria are. There's just tons of information on there at clinicaltrials.gov. And we did a um, your genetics question answered video a number of years ago on that. And so I'm going to see if I can quickly pull that up and get that um, in the chat uh, for those folks who are looking for research opportunities um, for a specific condition and support from that perspective. So any other hands up that I'm missing or any other things in the chat that I haven't seen? All right, I'm gonna put this entire page here of your genetic questions answered because there's, there's lot, maybe more questions on there that, that you might have. There are some about autism. Someone asked about autism earlier. And so there are some questions there, but if you scroll down, um, you will see one about um, clinical trials um, and uh, how do I find a clinical trial for my child's genetic condition? They're just short, short questions and answers, like five, 10 minute videos there if you're interested. All right, well, we are just one minute till the top of the hour. So just another reminder, if you would like to take part in our gift card drawing, we have a number of gift cards we're gonna give away today. Um, just fill out the form to let us know that you're interested and we'll put you in that drawing. And then also, um, if again, if you could fill out our evaluation form for the pop-up, we'd greatly appreciate it. The evaluation form does allow for you to connect with a genetic navigator. So if you would like, there's a question there, you can say yes or no. And if you would like to, a place to put your contact information um, so we can share that with our genetic navigators and they can follow up with you. Otherwise, we want to let you know that you can find, find um, the genetic navigator information on our website under For Families tab and the genetic navigator program. And I'll pop that in the chat as well. But all their email addresses and their bios are all on that page if you'd like to connect with them directly after, after the pop-up. With that, I will just say thank you to so much to our genetic navigators that joined us today. Thank you all for being on the panel discussion. Thank all of you uh, attending um, today's pop-up. And we are just so gracious for your time today and, and for being here. And this will conclude our last genetics pop-up for Mountain States. So long, everyone. Bye-bye.